Five. I'm Carly. Four. Three. Spaghetti taco. Two. I, Carly, is going to be taking a break. Welcome to the new iCarly. Amongst the plethora of reboots, remakes and sequels, iCarly is next in line to see how it navigates bringing our nostalgia into the modern day. But is breaking free of its Nickelodeon overlords and falling under the umbrella of Paramount a recipe for success? I'm Matt Rogers and this is a reboot done right iCarly, the web show or webcast as it was originally known, is largely responsible for inspiring a generation to post content online, myself included. And the show perfectly aligned with the uprising of YouTube and the normalization of social media influences. Back in 2007, Carly, Sam, Freddie and Spencer were given the difficult task of taking over the empty time slot left behind by Drake and Josh, which goes without saying was a lot of pressure. But once they found their stride, they each became household names and further skyrocketed the success of the Nickelodeon network. The show came to its natural end after six seasons consisting of just under 100 episodes, and I think it wrapped up without overstaying its welcome. But after nine years, the gang is back with an age-appropriate sequel season following the adult lives of our favourite web stars. Well, minus a few key members. After the official cast was announced, consisting of Miranda Cosgrove, Jerry Trainer, and Nathan Cress, the first question was, where's the rest of them? Notably absent was Noah Monk as Gibby and of course Jeanette McCurdy's Sam, arguably the second half of iCarly. And some would expect maybe they'll have a cameo, but considering the circumstances surrounding some of the actors not returning, it's unlikely at this stage. For those that aren't aware, Jeanette McCurdy has said she didn't have the best experience as a child actor and spoke about declining the role on her podcast, Empty Inside. I, I do not like any of the, the acting work that I have ever, like any of the projects that I've been a part of as an actor. And even talking about it, honestly, my heart starts to race and like I, I feel like I almost could cry. It brings me, I know that like the shows, that some people liked the shows and like kids liked the shows and I think that's that's great that they liked them. But for me, it was really hugely negative on my self-esteem and on my mental health. And I think largely contributed to so many eating disorders. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's a thing that kind of haunts me. And I feel like I'm at this place now. I quit acting a couple years ago and I was like, I know what I want to do. I want to write. I want to direct. I'm going to work my ass off to try and make that happen. It is sad to hear that a show that meant so much to a younger generation was a traumatic experience for one of its main stars. Noah Monk also had a negative experience with his character, previously saying that Gibby was always the quote punching bag and the expense of the joke. Though he has said that maybe one day he'll have a better relationship with the character and might come back. But despite casting setbacks, the reboot was greenlit with the remaining cast members and a quick explanation of Sam's absence in the first episode, hinting that she's thriving elsewhere. I need Sam, but she's off following her bliss with that biker gang. The obliterators. <laughs> hope she's okay. It's Sam. I hope they're okay. <laughs> Now, reboots are a tricky business. There is a very fine line between fan service and making things fresh. And marketing an iCarly reboot for tweens would have been a mistake, considering its fan base are now in their 20s, and kids these days probably wouldn't have the faintest clue the significance and the influence this show had back in its time. This called for making the story arcs relatable to young adults whilst keeping the iconic parts iconic. And that's what they've done. The first season of iCarly had a few tongue-in-cheek jokes before the humour was reeled in for a younger audience. She looks like Miss Briggs! <laughs> yeah, except he doesn't have Miss Briggs' crazy pointy boobs. <laughs> but seeing that the reboot's content rating included coarse language was saying a lot in itself. And in the first episode when the cast first mentioned sleeping with people, really caught me off guard, but it's not long until you settle into the more adult world of 2021's iCarly. Don't get me wrong, there is still some terrible Nickelodeon style sitcom jokes, but would you have it any other way? I know I wouldn't. We are treated to a fresh looking opening sequence with the same theme song, thank god. But they kept fan service to a minimum in the first episode, only including things like the Spencer baby head. Instead the episode just relied on being actually entertaining, which is daunting, but having the episode being directed by Phil Lewis of Sweet Life fame, we know it's in good hands. In the following episodes we get a few more references, memes, and familiar faces, but again they are not dependent on these and are more just sprinkled throughout to help with the obvious nostalgia the loyal fans want. 
Now is it just me or is Jerry Trainer a really underappreciated comedian? Yes, he's probably not given the best jokes to work with at times but he has great comedic timing and shines in any scene he's a part of. And Cosgrove has grown into a very talented young woman and hasn't lost the obvious charisma that is signature to the character of Carly. There's obviously some new cast members which are all great and genuinely funny. Carly's roommate Harper is good value and Freddy's adopted daughter is a great callback to the tween with attitude characters Nickelodeon shows are known for. I didn't think I'd be saying this, but I really didn't find myself missing Sam as much as I thought I would after the first episode. The following episodes keep the same energy too. The third episode called I Fopologize, being a meta take on the series and our generation's culture too. Spencer creates an art exhibit insulting internet culture and Carly jumps to its defense. With this arguably money-grabbing trend of reboots, it's nice to see an example of it done right and not tarnishing the name it's trying to make popular again. Another good test and in the same vein as this reboot would have been Disney's Lizzie McGuire, but unfortunately it's been confirmed that this revival has been cancelled before production even started, which is probably a huge disappointment to the same generation that were raised on iCarly also. But after the first few episodes being dropped, what are your thoughts? Is the new series a worthy addition to the classic series or should it have been left alone? I'd love to hear what you think so let me know, I'll be down there in the comments. But be sure to subscribe for weekly videos covering your favourite movies and TV shows. And if you subscribe during this video, then welcome aboard. And if you had a good time hanging out, then spank that like button. This is Matt Rogers, and that is all.